it's a weensy bit early for some serious Facebook video. <clears throat> but you know what I've learned after 47 years of not knowing how in the hell to live my life? Go with your gut, right? Just go with your gut. And when you... <laughs> Maybe it's making a living off of Facebook. So there are not many of us that can say we're here. You know, when people say, I'm on social media too much. I'm like, well, it's my job. I'm actually supposed to be over here. What a strange way to make a living, right? But I do. And, um... When you make a living on Facebook, where I expose the whole world, uh, you open yourself up to criticism. I mean, it, but it's really a good thing, right? Because if you're on Instagram, you're just over there looking good. You've got your nine children under age four, and everybody's smiling, and they match, and can only make a comment with like nine words. I mean, everything's perfect. But on Facebook, it's like you're opening your underpants drawer and saying, come on in. And you know, I'm okay with that. <clears throat> and there's some people that say, well, don't respond to the trolls. Don't do something. But the purpose of being here is to share and be honest, not to justify and explain away, at least for me. Hope you have the best drop off today. Oh, thank you. Um, thank you. Yes, my subscribers were going to do a little video on the way to school with the boys. But um, somebody this morning, I woke up. Of course, I was supposed to get up super early so we can leave in like 10 minutes. And they said, <laughs> you're an elitist. Y-O-U-R. You're an elitist, which I'm not going to comment on that because that would make me an elitist and your y-o-u-r you raising elitist period gross and i was like thinking am i raising elitist because this is what's good right i don't feel like i'm raising elitist i feel like i'm raising really nice and kind children and again i'm not i'm not uh, justifying but it's so interesting to me that social media feels like this place where you can just come out and say whatever the devil you feel like it's Sunday so I'm not cussing and um, and that you would actually say it to somebody I just can't imagine hopping over to one place, never seeing the person and being like, well, I'm just gonna issue a proclamation about their make me a cup. I mean, do Alitas drink Cafe Bustello? I doubt it. Oh my gosh, and do they trip over cats? Do Alitas have cats? If I were an Alitas, which I'm not sure what that is, I would not have a cat stress that. Yay, I've caught you luck. Yay. Um, but anyway, I, I, I think I'm raising really nice children. And I realize boarding school is an enigma to a lot of people. Trust me. It has been made very clear for me. <laughs> I mean, people are like, I, I couldn't let my children go. I couldn't do this. I couldn't do that. You don't like them, you know. It's like, if I didn't like, oh my gosh, tiptoe, get off the counter. Do elitist rescue kittens that show up under their trampoline? And not an in-ground trampoline. You know, the full-on Walmart trampoline. Um, you know, elitists don't have their in-laws for dinner. On their chairs, let me just point out that I have, how many did I get? Eight 
for $225, recovered no less, and then pack up their 15-year-old and 16-year-old for a year of high school. Elitists don't do that because elitists wouldn't think about anybody but themselves. I am sending half of my offspring 200 miles away today. And I'm telling you, it will be one of the hardest things I do. One of the hardest things I do. Not the hardest thing I've done, but one of the hardest. And I'll tell you why. One, I have a little boy with autism, so I know what real hard is. And I, when somebody says, well, you just don't care about public education. Are you freaking kidding me? I have a little person who is gonna be in public education until he's 22. If there's ever been a reason for me to care, clearly it's him. But the other thing is, I never set a toe in public school. Not a toe until I went to Carolina Graduate School. But you know what I got my master's in? Early intervention. You know what my PhD is in? Get ready. Education. I went to private school. Get ready. I went to private school, but I majored in something related to public education. I know, it's shocking. Get ready, it's shocking. No, I need a bigger cup. You can, you could be an advocate for prisons and not Spend your life in a jail cell. Well, there. I hope you caught that. A magnificent feat. The world's oldest almond milk that still tastes very fine. But anyway, now I'm gonna remember my point. Oh, raising Alitas. Oh my gosh, the cat. Get, get off the turn. Alitas don't just walk away from leftover dinner dishes have their in-laws to eat either. So, huh. Um, I have a little person with autism, so I'm not raising elitist. I'm pretty sure that my children are very well-versed and knowledgeable about the big wide world. Um, and the other thing is, Boarding school is not a place where they're just with a bunch of, you know, rich white boys. One of Thomas's best friends is from South Korea. There are people from all walks of life. I mean, there's a reason that these boarding schools have huge endowments to fund people that can't afford to go, right? There's a reason that 60% of schools like this are paid for by grandparents because most parents can't afford to go. How does Amos do? Sally, we'll talk about that a little bit this morning um, with our subscribers. I think he does pretty well. So anyway, that just was important to me to say. I don't know why. Nobody actually cares. But I do think it's important that we sort of step back and think, you know, where are we? And when we call somebody an elitist, what, what, what kind of judgment are we making on them? Are we an elitist? I've never called anybody an elitist, but I don't think I'm one. I think if I were one, I would know it, wouldn't I? Because it would have to be like a real goal. <sighs> I'm trying to lose weight, so I'm back on this almond milk and sweet and low. Very heavy cream. Okay, I'm off to watch my heart walk out the door and I'm doing it because it feels like the right thing to do. Is it the right thing to do? I don't know. I know that I went um, to boarding school. You know, my background was very different. I mean, it's like yesterday when I was talking to Russell about it, 
I mean, I think he's kind of excited to have a break from Amos, his little brother with autism. He babysits a lot for me. Um, he cleans up a lot of messes that Amos makes. I mean, he needs a break, and I get it, and I want him to have a break. Um, it's It can be hard, you know? I, I went off when I was their age, when I was 15, I was watching my brother die of cancer. So my year at boarding school, which was my first year at boarding school, um, was a really hard place, but my parents were living in a hospital. Now they didn't plan all this when I went, but I think they were thankful I was. I was losing my only sibling and boarding school was a place that was safe for me and I made these amazing friends that I have today. It's going to be my 30th reunion at Salem and um, I got to college and for the first time in my life I felt smart. I was a good writer. I I knew one that I pray with the short so to the root of hearts is better to the rota. I knew 42 lines of Canterbury Tales, Chaucer. Okay, maybe that does make me a little bit of an elitist. But I felt smart. And then I got into graduate school at Carolina, my very first public school. And I had friends that didn't look like me. And I was in school with tons of school administrators and principals and teachers. And then I got into NC State and I got a full ride health insurance, living stipend, paid for by the Howard Hughes Foundation. And I loved it. Um, I loved it. Not everybody got that education that I did, but I did, and I took advantage of it. And I hopefully have made the world a little bit better by it. And I hope that my children have been given this opportunity to go to this school 200 miles away. That is amazing. And it's not that my public school is not amazing or that we have amazing teachers. But North Carolina, public schools, just like Harvard isn't Carolina, you can't offer those courses. You know, it's not possible. Um, it's not possible. But do I think it'll help them become the people that I really want them to be? And will it help them improve things that they want to see better and different? I hope so. I hope that's what I do. Um, you know, nobody wants, I don't think anybody goes out into this world and says, I want to be an advocate. But when you belong to a person like Amos, you have to be. And when you live in Eastern North Carolina, you have to be an advocate. We have, we live, it's so beautiful here. I mean, I'm looking out my window, drinking my nasty coffee, looking at Albemarle Sound. It is beautiful here. Beautiful. And we get the short end of the stick when it comes to funding for public education. But I can send my boys to private school in a big city, and I can still work. If anything, I can work even harder on what's happening in Eastern North Carolina, whether it's for kids with disabilities or whether it's for all our kids um, or people that just live here. So I just, that's my public service announcement for the day. If you want to be a subscriber, come over to my subscriber page. It's a super great group. Um, and we talk about things and I'm going to have some really cool things going on this fall. We're going to, um, I'm going to be in Raleigh a good bit, doing some advocacy at the General Assembly, meeting with um, politicians, which I've always done, but I'm really committed to doing that. I'm excited. Amos is going to be on the cover of a magazine in a couple months. Uh, I think he's going to be in a North Carolina commercial, um, all for nonprofit organizations who are promoting things that I believe in and want access to. So many. Bye.